Good morning, guys. This morning I am out on uh, Texas Ranger Donald Beard's uh, ranch, and this is his private herd that he has uh, just outside of uh, Caprock. I mean, you can actually see um, some of the, the topography here on the ranch. It's a beautiful ranch. You don't see a lot of places like this in Texas. So um, I'll take you guys up, show you around, and give you a tour of uh, Ranger Beard's private ranch. Looks like we've got some that have come up for some water while I was talking here. This morning they've all been kind of out. On the other side there's a little, um, I don't know what you would call it, a, a little canyon right behind these guys. But let me flip this around, give you a looky. Morning. like everybody's coming up for a drink now, huh? Been standing here all morning, you finally decide to come up. My name's Donald Beard. I'm with Caprock Bison Company here in Kittigoy, Texas. And we're here to talk about bison a little bit today. Been feeding them here around the pens, getting them ready for working, so I bet they're not far away. We're redoing our pens. Been doing a lot of work around right here, so we actually had to feed them out of here yesterday. This place that we're on here, it, it's a section, it's it's 640 acres, and it is a lease. Uh, I, I just can't find the right place to buy, but this, so we're leasing this place, and I've got a long-term lease on it, which is great, but even still, it's a lease, so I have a hard time putting a whole lot of infrastructure in, you know, because one day I'm not gonna have this lease. So we made a business decision that, that when we start to build our pens and all of our working facilities, I want to be able to take them. It's 24 foot panels, weigh about a thousand pounds each. I mean, they're, wow. they're pretty heavy and they all chain together. It works, it works really well. And the cool thing about this is if I ever decide to get out of the business, I mean, I can get some money back. Yeah. yeah. You know, if they're anchored in the ground, you're not selling them. You can sell these. this gate open they come into these two pins here where we can break them down and I've got about we're talking about five or six at a time okay so we'll split them off into three or four or whatever in each of these big pins here I say big pins pins here and then at that gate I'm having some tubs built this year all of our pins are based upon freestanding panels you know nothing's in the ground it's all just self-contained We've got a portable chute, a nice Berlinic. There's a push the button there and on some advertising. I love that Berlinic chute. Um, but yeah, it's all it's all portable. So we can move if we have to. Hope hope it's hope I don't. Hope I'm out of the business and selling it from here, because it's such a great place. They don't recognize this truck is what it is. Oh, they're like, who are you? If I was in my red truck, they'd be all over us. <laughs> so I don't see any of my big bulls right here, but uh, we'll find them. These are my two-year-old bulls. I've got about a dozen of them out here. And then I've got about 
10 or so two-year-old heifers. I've got about 20 new calves this year, 20, 22, something like that. I've got 25 cows, and then I've got two big bulls. Right now we're running about uh, 50 adult animals on that section of land, and that's, you know, on a bad year, that's probably too many. On a good year, that's okay. I, I wanna lower that population down a little bit. So right now I've got about 50 adults and about 20 calves. In the beginning especially, we had a smaller number of animals, and so I could go out and spend time with them and actually know the animals a little bit better. And so, especially the big bulls, I would get to know them, you know, from my perspective anyway. It's not like, you know, we talked or anything like that, but, but you could start to see the characteristics of the animals. And, and you spend time with them, and, and they do have unique characteristics and unique, uh, uh, they do different things, you know, they're, they're individuals without a doubt. Her name is Karen. Karen? Oh, that's hilarious. Hello, she, Karen. She is a Karen. You're a Karen? We started a bison operation uh, about five years ago, and we started with a really good set of cows that we purchased out of Montana, had them brought down, and then we've got a couple of bulls that we purchased out of New Mexico, the Castle Rock, Vermejo Park bulls. And so we're growing some really fancy bison. They're, they're really nice looking, healthy, big animals, for especially for the Southern Plains. And, and our goal is to uh, build this herd up and provide breeding stock. That's kind of our main emphasis. We're trying to develop a really good breeding stock of bison, but we also obviously have surplus. So we're getting into the meat business as well. So we're gonna be starting hopefully this year uh, with some meat uh, and uh, doing some retail operations, some wholesale to restaurants and stuff like that. I'm from Fort Worth, which is about four and a half hours south, southwest of here, and, um, or southeast here, I mean. So I, I had very little knowledge of this area and what, what the, the history of it was until I got here. And it doesn't take long to realize that this was some amazing country and that the history that is here, mainly the Native American history that is here is just, it's, it's wow. I mean, this was the heart of Comancheria. This was the heart of the Comanche Nation. These, these canyons that we're in now were the wintering grounds for both the Comanche and the bison from the Southern Plains. You can see the bison have been back in here, so it's probably gonna be a little slippery too. But this is a uh, natural spring that feeds out of this canyon. I think I can cross here. Make sure you get this on video in case I fall. Ah, it wasn't too bad. But this is one of their watering spots that they come to. Uh, this, this pasture actually, it, this is their main source of water, is this spring here. And it, uh, it does enough, it keeps them going. So, you know, they, they, uh, they definitely mud it up right here, but it's, it's a good little spot. The whole spring starts right here in this pool. We do have a few bullfrogs in here too. But this to me is just really cool. You know, how long has this been here? This is this is what I, I think of when I come here or, or any kind of places like this. Who has been here before me? Who has been here and knelt down and taken a drink or camped right up here on top or, you know? I mean, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of kind of conceited a little bit, thinking that this is this is ours. This isn't ours. This this will be here long after we're gone. This is something that has probably been here for a thousand years or whatever. And there's been a lot of people that came before me, and a lot of people that'll come after me. I've had some people come in and say, you know, you ought to dig this out, dam it up, make a big old pond out of it. No, this is what it's supposed to be right here. 
If I was a really smart man, I would go find me a place on top that's flat and square with no terrain whatsoever, because that would be the easiest to manage as far as bison and fencing and everything that's involved in it. But, you know, that's not, I guess I'm not the smartest man because <laughs> obviously I didn't do that. I found, uh, I found a place that has some of that nice grasslands, but then has some really cool canyons that, you know, to me it's, it's, it's not just about bison production. It's about the entire experience. It's, it's the holistic side of things. It's, it's uh, managing the land, you know, seeing these canyons, seeing how the water flows through these canyons and you know, how you know, man tries to shape that and it, it ultimately always fails because na nature does its thing. But uh, yeah, so uh, the, the park has about a thousand foot elevation drop and it's got some really steep canyons as you probably know. Uh, so it makes it very difficult in management. So I, 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 I wanted a, a good, a good combination of both. Make it easier on me, but still have some of that topography. And I think we found a perfect spot here. We're nestled right at the base of the Cap Rocks. I mean, you've got some great views of the Cap Rocks at sunset and sunrise. and it's Just a beautiful place, without a doubt. I have three kids and at some point, they always, when I come to the ranch, I say, I'm going to the ranch. At some point, they'll say, no, I don't want to go. But it's, sometimes they'll say, yeah, I want to go. And then we'll come out here, and I've got a few of my bison that are calm enough that will come eat out of your hand, and that's pretty cool for the family. And, and to be able to bring the whole family out here and sit in the middle of that bison herd or sit in a deer blind and, and hunt hogs or whatever that case may be, this is such an awesome place, you know. We have such an opportunity here. They're, they're growing up in a little small community, a little small school, and, and that to me is just as important as raising those bison. You know, you, everybody, and I think I've mentioned it, everybody talks about the holistic management. Well, it's not just the holistic management of the ranch. It's, you, you gotta look at the whole big picture. Your health, your mental health, your physical health, your family's health, and this lifestyle, to me, everybody may not have the same opinion, but to me, this is such an awesome lifestyle because we get to spend time together in the outdoors and enjoy this, this type of stuff with nature. We're still trying to work out our, our business model on how this is all going to flow uh we're we're we've got a lot of ideas you know again main thing we're going to do is some breeding stocks i've got some really nice two-year-old bulls that, that we'll be selling and some two-year-old bred heifers and that's kind of where we'll sell our animals at that two-year-old mark so we're going to take the calves and we're going to raise them up until they're that two-year-old mark and either be breeding bulls two-year-old bred heifers or what's left over the surplus will go towards our meat and that's kind of the model we're looking at. And as far as the meat sales, we will be selling in quarters and halves and holes and whatever else. But we're also looking at doing some retail and some wholesale stuff. Like I said, this is right outside of Caprock Canyon State Park. There's almost 100,000 people a year that come through here and you'd be surprised how many people want a bison burger. So I'm hoping that our bison, or our cafes here will buy some of our meat and we'll keep them in stock. I'm thinking about maybe doing some retail there on Main Street. We do have a building that uh, we uh, have a VRBO type place above it where you can rent it uh, called the lodge. And then uh, right now we have a, a salon that my wife does hair and nails in. And, you know, she doesn't want to do that forever. So we're looking at different things to do. And a retail bison operation might be down the road where we sell some meat, sell some merchandise, you know, those types of things. We're still trying to figure all that out. We don't know where it's going to go yet. I have another job where I manage the state park, Caprock Canyon State Park, and I started uh, managing bison in 2009 or 2010. My main experience came from managing the bison at the park, which I, I went out and tried to learn as much as I could. Okay, I went to other bison ranches, helped them work bison. I went to conferences and learned all aspects of the bison trade. You know, I mean, I, I 
conservation agencies, uh, IUCN, International Union for Conservation of Nature, any, anything I could do to, to gather information to make my experience better, to help manage these bison and, and that state park better. I, I reached out and did that. And I spent several years doing that research. And um, I learned a lot. I learned a whole lot. And it, I, there's no doubt it was valuable. It, it, it helped me quite a bit. But I tell you what I learned, coming from the conservation side of things where I started and now on the production side of things and, and being on both sides of that proverbial fence that doesn't really exist, I can say that we all have the same thing in common and that's, that's we care about bison. If you're part of bison, you know what I'm talking about. They, they, they get into you. You become part of that animal. And you know, you hear all the time the Native Americans have this, this connection with their animal. It's, it's more like an ancestor, a relative to them. Well, I think that's the animal because that animal, the bison, will do that to you. They, they become part of you. you, you it, it, and I'm not saying anything bad about cattle. You know, a lot of people raise cattle. I raise a few cattle. You know, that's, that's, that's cool. That's all right. But, but bison, there's just something different about them. And, and there's a reason they're the mammal, national mammal of the United States of America, because there's just something so different and unique about them. And I believe it's up to us as, as individuals, not necessarily organizations or governments. I believe it's up to us to see where the future goes on these bison. And I think it looks very promising. I've got some great relationships with the Native Americans, with government agencies, with private producers, and we all need to just work together because that's, that's what's gonna make the bison successful. That's what's gonna keep making them successful is us working together, not, not the division. There's enough division in this, in this country right now. We don't need it. We don't need it at all. And I could get on that political soapbox, but I'm not gonna do that. But what we do need is bison people to come together. We need to come together and be one. And, and we started that, we've, we've, you've seen that. The, the U.S. Mammal, you know, that, that designation was done by government agencies, tribals, producers. We all came together and got that done. And you could see how successful that was. So why can't we do that on every aspect? Why does it have to be us versus them or, or these animals versus these animals? They're bison, they're bison, and, and we all love them and we all want to see them succeed. You want another one? You want another one? Mm -hmm. you want another one? <laughs> How many people say they've done that before, right? Yeah. <laughs>